Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I did a story recently about the uh, ex-police chief who was accused of taking bribes, and I believe convicted of it, and the bribes were in the form of overpayments to his band, Funky Monkey, uh, in exchange for steering contracts while he was the police chief. And Keith sent me a note and said, Steve, check this out. Bribery occurs in all walks of life, including in the automotive world with just corporations. From the Los Angeles Times, ex-GM manager accused of taking $3 million in bribes from a parts supplier in South Korea. Michael Finnegan wrote the story. And the former GM manager was arrested in Los Angeles recently on a charge that he took more than $3 million in bribes from a South Korea parts supplier in return for a major contract with the automaker in Detroit. Uh, The man's 46 years old, now lives in Irvine, took $3.45 million in cash from the parts supplier in late 2015, a payoff for rigging the bids on a contract to supply General Motors with auto painting window film and molding and this is according to the federal grand jury indictment issued just the other day at the time the man was a manager in gm's global purchasing and supply chain organization in michigan where he oversaw the supply of parts used to build automobile interiors in january of 2020 he was hired as global purchasing chief at karma automotive a luxury car company in irvine according to his online resume He uh, left Karma Automotive in December, according to the company. His attorney declined to comment. GM released a statement saying it was cooperating with federal investigators. General Motors does not tolerate or condone corruption or bribery of any kind, a company spokesperson said. The illegal conduct alleged here is entirely inconsistent with our code of conduct and corporate policies. The indictment charged the man with one count of conspiracy to commit bribery, Prosecutors say the amount of the alleged kickback was unusually high for a purchasing agent at one of America's biggest corporations. The bribe amount is very significant, says the U.S. attorney assistant, a U.S. attorney. It's larger than most bribe amounts that people see in corporate prosecutions. Agents from U.S. Homeland Security investigations seized $3.19 million in cash from a private vault in Los Altos in 2017, and they believe that was part of the bribe proceeds. According to authorities, the money was returned to South Korean authorities, they said. The plot began at an October 2015 meeting in South Korea where the man told the owner of a parts supply company he could ensure that that man's company would win a large GM contract if he was paid $5 million in cash to make it happen. The supplier, who is listed in the indictment as an unnamed co-conspirator and another unnamed accomplice, arranged for money brokers in South Korea and Los Angeles to transfer $1 million in cash to the U.S. The accomplice rented a car in L.A. and drove the cash to Detroit, where the supplier picked it up and gave it to this man at a hotel in Troy, Michigan. Troy, Michigan, very close to where I grew up. And by the way, you can just picture this guy driving a rental car with a million dollars in cash (laughs) cross-country and avoiding civil asset forfeiture. Because when he's asked, what are you doing with the money? He can't say I'm driving cross country with his cash to bribe somebody who works at an automaker to give us some business. After a competitor submitted a lower bid, the supplier who paid the bribe revised its proposal. And this man then recommended that GM executives award the contract to the company that paid the kickback, according to the indictment. So it's possible that they simply paid the guy and said, make sure we get the bid. Or it could be that in exchange for you know, getting paid this money, the man said, by the way, your bid was too high. Do this and you'll get the, you know, so it might be that he got inside information also. A week later, it says the supplier's accomplice collected another $2.45 million in cash from Los Angeles money brokers and drove it to Detroit, where the supplier again picked up the money and delivered it to the man who's been indicted here, this time at a restaurant in Detroit. So in the movies, when the guy shows up someplace with a big old briefcase full of cash, and the guy clicks it, looks in there, and closes it, and then they, then they, have, they have a meal. <laughs> That's what happened here. The supplier was prosecuted in South Korea, according to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Los Angeles, uh, and a newspaper in South Korea reported that an unnamed auto parts supplier was arrested and indicted in 2017 on charges of paying a $3.45 million rebate on a $35 million sale of car equipment to GM, but the final outcome of the case was unclear. 
And of course, we're not sure how those words translate properly from one language to the other and whether the rebate was just a nickname for a kickback uh, or a bribe. But of course, bribery in almost any setting that we've talked about hurts somebody. So the bribery that is happening with the police chief, former police chief now, uh, obviously uh, that would drive up the cost of the radio system that the police department got and that was being paid for by taxpayers. So it's a waste of taxpayer money. Now here, where General Motors is a big company trying to do business competitively in a worldwide global marketplace, doing everything they can to be competitive, uh, they want to get their stuff as cheaply as possible, that is their parts. And so when one of their parts buyers, the guys in charge of buying parts for them, uh, is accepting bribes to make sure that certain people get contracts, that money's got to come from somewhere. And so presumably, uh, that money is going to result in higher-priced cars down the road because if two people submit bids and one person is a legitimate low bidder, but somehow this guy using his influence gets somebody who's not the low bidder to be the supplier, and it's worth $3.45 million or whatever it is for these people to get the business, well, presumably, that's money that's got to come from somewhere. So they're passing it along to who? Passing it along to General Motors, which is being passed along to people who buy GM products. So it's hurting the corporation. It's hurting consumers. And we have a guy who has now been accused of taking a $3 million bribe from a South Korean parts supplier. So that's a grand jury indictment. Uh, and so there's a whole legal process ahead of this guy. And as of right now, these are all merely allegations. Uh, he's not been found guilty of anything. So therefore, he is as innocent today as the day is long. It's just a question of whether that'll change somewhere down the road. So I assume there'll be some kinds of things like arraignments and someone will enter a plea. And if the plea is not guilty, then they will proceed to potentially a trial. Uh, or if the guy and his attorney decide to try to work something out, there might be some kind of interim deal. Uh, or you never know. But that's the situation right now. So Michael Finnegan wrote the story for the Los Angeles Times. And Keith sent it to me. And it's an interesting story. There have been all kinds of allegations over the years similar to this. It happens from time to time. Uh, and there's also a lot of fighting uh, over suppliers and, and how pricing works with suppliers. And it is amazing to study how the auto industry has changed over time. There was a time years ago where the car companies made a lot of their own parts and they would only farm stuff out that you know legitimately could be done by somebody else because they specialized in it and you know like tires. Tires for a long time have been made by outside suppliers. But when it comes to things like you know door handles or seats, things of that nature, uh, there was a time when the car companies made that stuff. And they gradually started saying, you know something, if someone else can make it for us, they bear some of the risk. And we can also get two different suppliers and play them off each other. And while we're building cars, we can get these people to do what they can to lower the cost of the component parts. And they can beat each other up, but we don't have to beat ourselves up. And so it's gotten to the point now where a large amount of the car if you broke it down by parts, is being made by other people. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it does make the process a little different in that you've got to find suppliers, work with suppliers, and you've got to make sure, for instance, let's, let's suppose that you've got a hot car and you're going to build hundreds of thousands of them. Well, you need parts for all of them. So you need someone who can supply you a large quantity of parts over a long period of time at a price that you can predict so you can price the car properly. And you hear these crazy stories about they go to a supplier and some suppliers making parts and, and they've miscalculated something and the supplier goes belly up. And now they're scrambling to find parts. And there have been examples of vehicles that were hot selling vehicles that were coming down the assembly line and they ran out of some bizarre part that they didn't make. They bought it from a supplier and the supplier either ran out, broke down, the people there went on strike. Something weird happened at that one supplier. And because they only had one source for that one particular part, they got to stop the assembly line. And that's happened. So there's a whole world of, of just oddities that can happen in the supply chain. 
and the impact that can have, especially with just-in-time ordering. And many people will know this, but if you look at an assembly line and you've got vehicles coming down an assembly line and pieces are getting put onto this vehicle as it comes down the assembly line, the parts and pieces that get brought in to put, be put on the car, well, if you're going to build 100,000 of these cars, you don't need 100,000 parts in this building today. You just need as many parts today as you're going to build cars today. Well, you don't want the rest of those parts sitting in a warehouse either because that means you've wasted money because you bought parts before you needed them. So ideally, the parts show up just in time to be there when the car comes down, you put it on, boom. And so you have a steady supply of parts coming in from the suppliers out here providing you parts just in time. But the problem, of course, is that getting all of these parts streams in place and flowing perfectly it's, it's like a very, very complicated production, like of an opera or something. And all it takes is one thing to go wrong, and you can have the line come to a screeching halt. So there's all kinds of people involved in all different levels of this, including some guy whose job it is to go out and look into auto painting, window film, and molding. And that's what he specialized in, those two things. Now, of course, GM will have the paint stuff there and the paint booth. And I know it's not a paint booth in that sense, but they've got all kinds of robotic paint things nowadays. Uh, so presumably, it's either the machines to do the painting or it's the paint itself. But the window film and then molding are different parts. And again, if you look at how many parts go into a car, it, it, it's, it's quite a lot, quite a lot. So there's a whole bunch of people involved in decisions like this and General Motors makes more money when it's done properly and not with people taking bribes. So LA Times, Michael Finnegan wrote it. Keith sent it to me. Thanks a lot. Ex-GM manager accused of taking $3 million in bribes from a South Korean parts supplier. We'll see what happens. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. It is unpredictable for you to know which of the strangers you are about to meet might become your friend. Be polite to every stranger.